Hey guys, this is my Chromebook, featuring a whopping 4 gigabytes of RAM, 32 gigs of eMMC, blazing slow storage, and an Intel chip that is about as fast as a snail. This is the pinnacle of terrible computing. So, as a result, I think it's a fine day to take a look at this. I'm John, and let's get into this. So, I got this Chromebook in a lot, and uh, I basically bought the lot uh, with the assistance of a friend because we wanted to tinker with these. And it didn't quite go as planned, but we'll get to that. So, I bought it, and the price was roughly about $20, give or take, which for a computer that was fully working, not bad. And this laptop admittedly has some pretty snazzy things about it. For example, it has two USB-C ports that support charging, and it doesn't require a barrel jack or anything like that to charge it, which is great, hate those. And it also has two USB-A ports, which is two more of my 2023 MacBook Pro has, as well as a good old headphone jack. So as far as IO goes, not too shabby. So turning on this wretched piece of computer uh, hardware, you will see a terrible 1366 by 768 display. And yes, it does suck. However, for a such a cheap device, you can get by. It's just very low res. And the keyboard is surprisingly all right to type on, but the trackpad is absolute garbage. So you'll want to take advantage of a mouse, whether it be USB or Bluetooth. So in that case, pretty underwhelming hardware. Admittedly, it's nice. It has dual speakers, stereo, although they are very quiet and tinny. And it also doesn't have a fan, which Steve Jobs would approve of, but this is, this is bad. So why would you ever want to use this? Well, in a word, Linux. Now, this whole process is detailed on the website mrchromebox.tech, linked below, and that will be your best guide for figuring out how to install an alternative operating system on one of these Chromebooks. Luckily for me, the Dell Chromebook 3100 is in the supported list. To summarize, basically what you do is you put this in developer mode, disconnect the battery internally, which is really easy. Once you disconnect the battery, you can officially run Mr. Chromebox's script that essentially allows you to install a custom firmware on this Chromebook that allows booting of other operating systems. And because of its paltry amount of storage, which is genuinely terrible, you are gonna wanna remove Chrome OS. No big loss there. Now, once you install your operating system of choice, you are going to have to contend with drivers. And Windows 10 just couldn't find any. And I wasn't about to try to figure out that because I did a bunch of sleuthing and I just couldn't find drivers for some of the hardware in it. So I switched to Ubuntu, the main version of it. And to my surprise, all the drivers were there. So it all worked, except for the headphone jack. But in the age of Bluetooth, which does work, who cares? And Ubuntu was an interesting experience indeed. Basically, everything works surprisingly well. And because it's running natively, not in an emulator, programs, well, they work a little better than you expect. Firefox is perfectly tolerable on here, as is Chrome, at least for something of this caliber. You can, you know, have a couple tabs open and get around okay. And it can even stream HD YouTube, albeit if you're going to want to do it comfortably, I recommend 720p. Uh, 1080 might be pushing it, but sometimes it works. And because this is running just plain old Ubuntu on x86 hardware, there are tons of apps. I even was able to get IntelliJ IDEA to run on this puppy. More on that soon. And beyond that, you have all the classics like LibreOffice, Calibre, uh, be sure to come to the Kindle video, it's pretty cool. And on top of that, uh, you can also run games like Super Tux Cart, which offers pretty good entertainment and uh, yeah, it's pretty good <laughs> for a little open source game, it's pretty great. And all the typical Linux software you can run on it. As for storage, you are gonna run into some barriers there, but the base install generally takes up about eh, 
somewhere between five and 10 gigabytes. So you still have about 20 gigabytes at your disposal, which is pretty good, all things considered. And you can load up some programs on it for sure, which just gives it a little bit more functionality than you get out of Chrome OS. Again, this is the latest version of Ubuntu running natively on this Chromebook. And because I am a bit of a weirdo, I decided to take this to my computer science class and see if I could get by just using this. Got where you want so how bad is using this Chromebook overall? It's not good. It really isn't. And while it is usable in the most basic sense of the word, it's not a good experience. But you kind of already knew that. Is there any reason to go out and buy one of these? Well, it has some tinkering appeal. And admittedly, if you want a small laptop just for like very basic tasks, like you could do worse, I guess, but you also could do a lot better. It's one of those things where you'd be better off just saving up a little more money for something better. However, if you get a really, really good deal on one and just don't have a good time, no one's stopping you. 20 bucks is 20 bucks. So yeah, I've had fun with this thing and I get a little use out of it. So I'm content, even if it is god awful. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.